Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to be putting the crankshaft into the engine block, uh, which is super exciting stuff because that means this engine is actually starting to go back together. Um, on the other hand, there's a few things that I need to discuss first. Uh, so let's take care of that and then we'll dive into the build part of the video. Go back, 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 back. Okay, I'm going to try to make this part as short as possible. Uh, if you want to skip over this information, you can. I'll put a, like, uh, a timestamp right here and then also down in the description. You know, I usually have my uh, time codes. Uh, however, this is pretty important information that you guys should uh, um, internalize here. So, there are two and a half problems that I'm facing with this. Yes, two and a half uh, with my build. And one of which is my uh, piston rings. So... I picked up a set of ITM engine components piston rings for my whole engine um, because I broke my one of my oil rings on one of my pistons and uh, they were incorrect. I contacted ITM engine components and it turns out that somehow they packaged M103 rings into the boxes for M104. So as of right now, late February of 2021, you cannot get ITM engine components piston rings. They are incorrect. Even if you find them, they are wrong. Um, it's probably gonna be a couple of months before that is corrected and vendors have the correct piston rings. Uh, so just be aware of that. I did find some Hastings piston rings and I will uh, put the part number down below in the description so that you guys have that. Um, and that's what I have on the way. However, they're coming from Europe. I am in the southwestern United States, and so it's going to be like two weeks to get to me or more. Um, so that super sucks. So the second problem that I was facing is uh, the transmission controller. When you go from a naturally aspirated engine to a turbocharged engine, very rarely are you able to like spoof the computer and get it to recognize boost versus vacuum in the intake manifold. Um, and I don't want to try to cheat it. I don't want to try to do anything weird. Like I said before, I want this to be extremely reliable. I want to be able to drive 100,000 miles on this car, you know, doing pulls every once in a while, you know, stoplight here or whatever, um, but then be able to road trip on it and drive places on it and have it reliable um, consistently. So that's my goal with this. And so I'm trying to do this as smart as possible. That said, I'm really battling what I want to do with the transmission controller because I'm replacing or at least piggybacking the engine controller um, with a Mega Squirt 2. I think I'm going to piggyback it at this point because I've been doing research. Um, but I don't know how the transmission controller is going to handle the additional torque and load. I don't know if the transmission is going to uh, be able to work with the new engine configuration. We're just going to find out. Uh, unless somebody can shed some light on this, uh, let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about this. But I'm going to piggyback with a Mega Squirt 2 on top of the uh, original engine computer. And then I'm just going to have the computer talk to the transmission like stock. And we're just going to see what happens. Um, and that's my plan with that. So that's what's going to happen there. It's going to cut a little bit of cost. And as long as it works, I think that we'll be okay. I just hope that the transmission controller doesn't freak out over that. Now... That's the second problem that I'm facing is this transmission. Yeah, like, like I said, I'm not going to go to a manual transmission because this uh, 722.6 transmission is pretty uh, strong and reliable. And it would be a shame to uh, scrap it, even though I hate it. It's been leaking the entire time I've had this car. It's just been dripping red transmission fluid onto my exhaust. And I could just smell that transmission fluid now. I can smell it. I've been Every time I get in that car, I'm, ah! Anyways, so... I'm going to fix the leaks on it and I'm not going to have that problem. So those are the two problems that I'm having uh, and those are the solutions that I think that I have for it. And the third problem is the turbo. So turbochargers are ridiculously complicated. If anybody here has ever done research on turbochargers, it's ridiculous. There's so much that goes into turbochargers and then trying to find information on turbochargers is even more ridiculous. It's like... There's more documentation on YouTube and on the internet about quantum mechanics than there are about the specifications of turbos. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. So what I've decided to go with is an Airworks S200X uh, with, I think it's a 48 millimeter um, compressor. Um, and after the extensive research that I've done, I'm 
still in the dark on turbos as far as turbos go, but I'm pretty sure that this is going to fit uh, what I need. It's a twin scroll. It's 550 bucks. I found it on eBay. Um, and I, I think it's going to do the job just fine. Uh, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is because if you're going to choose a different turbo from me, do your research. Don't just buy some turbo and then just slap it on. I mean, it might work, but there's problems that can come along with that. And, uh, you, what you don't want to do is get compressor surge and you don't want to, um, uh, over spool the turbo because it can't get enough air. Uh, you don't want to uh, choke your exhaust, you know, choke your engine because it can't push through the uh, the turbine fast enough. That said, I really think that for a 400 to 450 horsepower build, I think that a uh, Borg Warner Airworks S200X, that's pretty much as good as you're going to get for 500 bucks or so for a turbo. So um, that's the other problem that I was facing. Turbos are just ridiculously complicated. Anyways, um, today in this video, we're going to be putting the crankshaft into the engine block and uh, I'm always pointing over here <laughs> and that's the main stuff that's going in today. Um, I really was trying to do stuff with the rings, but like I said, that's not going to happen. It's a couple weeks out from now. Um, however, I am going to be doing stuff on the head. So we're going to take a, a break on the block because I'm waiting for parts. And in the meantime, we're going to be working on the head uh, and going over all of that. So stay tuned for that. Without further ado, let's dive right into doing this crankshaft. All right, guys. So real quick, um, I'm going to show you the parts that are going into this uh, today for this episode. So I'm reusing the old thrust washers. Uh, there's really no wear on them. I've looked them over and they haven't really been worn. They're doing all right. They haven't really been worn. So I'm going to use the old thrust washers um, to measure our bearing clearances. I'm going to be using plastic gauge and I'm using uh, Glyco main bearings. I think I got it from, from Rock Auto. Don't quote me on that. Parts are kind of hard for this, uh, but I just wanted to give you a rundown of what's going into this today. So before we get started here, step one is to clean the crankshaft. Make sure that your crankshaft is all the journals, the writing surfaces, they're all 100% clean and all of the oil uh, tubes inside of it are 100% clean. You don't want all that dust flowing through your oil system on first startup. Next, you're going to want to make sure the bearing housings, which includes the main bearing caps, the backs of the bearings themselves, and the face of the bearings all are dry. Also make sure that the journals and the crank are 100% dry too. You don't want them to be covered with oil uh, when we go through the measurement process. Also note, the main bearing housings, along with the main bearings, the rear sides of the main bearings, they're going to remain dry throughout this whole process and through the build. You do not lubricate the back sides of the bearings. And when installing the bearings, make sure to line up the tabs when you're putting them in. Make sure that you're putting the bearing halves with the oil lines into the block and not into the caps. And make sure when you're setting the crankshaft into the block that you're very careful and very slow. You also don't need thrust bearings in at this point. And remember, with this thing completely dry like this, do not rotate the crankshaft everything is dry, you will damage and scrape and scratch and it is not good. Now once the crankshaft is in, uh, even though you watched me put the other bearing halves on top of the crankshaft journals, what you're going to want to actually do is put the bearing halves into the bearing caps first and then uh, set your plastic gauge on top of each of the journals and then set your caps on top of the plastic gauge um, over each journal. So I didn't cover this when I was originally shooting, um, and I want to show you guys this. Maybe you could look this up on YouTube, wherever, but you're already here, so I'll show you. So with your plastic gauge, what you want to do, um, we're using the green here, and uh, you're going to open this up, take your little piece. You want to take off a piece that's like, uh, you know, if this is your bearing, we'll say that this is your, your, your journal where it's writing. Uh, you want to do like half the size across this way. Uh, and then tear off a little piece from here and then lay it across, you know, kind of in the center, you know, so that there's like a, a quarter of bearing this way and a quarter of bearing this way laying across in the center. Um, so just a heads up on that. So I wanted to double check uh, the placement of the main cap bolts. So I used the oil baffle, laid it over the bottom side of the engine and uh, double checked. So you want to make sure that the first bearing cap has the bolts that do not have threads in the top of them for screws and the rest get the other kind of uh, bolts. Next, as you can see here, what you're going to want to do is use some type of thread lubricant 
um, you don't want to put these things in dry. When you try to put any bolt in dry, um, as especially bolts that have a lot of uh, tension or, or pressure on them as you're tightening them, um, for example, like these main cap bolts, you want to make sure that they're lubricated because when they're dry, um, metal on metal, they want to grab on each other. There's a molecular uh, phenomenon that takes place and they want to grab each other, so you need to use thread lubricant. Uh, and not only on the threads, you want to use it on the shoulder as well, which is the bottom face of the bolt head. Then just get your bolts into each one of the caps and run them all down finger tight. Uh, they don't have to be crazy tight because they're actually not all the way down in yet. Uh, what you want to do then is uh, to reduce the amount of like slop or, or like flip flopping that happens when you tighten everything down. You're going to want to take a hammer and very gently tap each one of the bearing caps down um, into its place because they have a very fine fit where they sit down inside of the block. Um, and typically when you set the caps in, they are not 100% in place yet. You have to tap them down. But remember to be very gentle when you do this. So you're first going to start from the center of the crank and you're going to get uh, those bolts pretty snug and then, you know, go to the next cap to the left and then to the right and the next cap to the left and right and the next cap to the left and right. Then you're going to start back at the center again and you're going to get them a little bit tighter than, you know, snug and then you're going to again go left, right, left, right, left, right until you're at the edges. Then you're going to go back to the center and tighten them down to uh, factory spec. So the factory spec for the tightness on each one of these um, main bolts here is 40.5 foot-pounds and that equates to 55 newton meters. Uh, then once you have everything tightened that far, then what you're going to do is draw a mark on the head of each bolt and then rotate each bolt uh, 45 degrees twice. And I say it like that because you want you don't want to tighten everything 90 degrees all the way down and across. Uh, you want to try to go in steps so that you reduce the stress as you tighten. So first is 40.5 foot pounds and then which is 55 newton meters and then you go 45 degrees on each bolt across and then 45 degrees again for a total of a 90 degree uh, rotation after the 40.5 foot pounds slash 55 uh, newton meter torque. So after struggling a little bit trying to get these bolts tight enough and trying to hold the block still, uh, I found a pretty good way to hold the block and wrench uh, and use your foot to hold leverage against it so what you want to do is grab the block through the starter hole here and then you want to put your foot down here at the end of the engine stand to you know stop it from rotating and then you grab your wrench and pull towards your other hand um, and you use both your arms to pull together like demonstrated here and as I'm tightening here I'm keeping in mind that I only want to rotate these things uh, 90 degrees and so, like you saw before, I put the marks and I rotate them and I'm checking to make sure that they're going exactly 90 degrees, not too far, not too little. Um, and so I'll pull the wrench off several times uh, checking. Now we need to remove each one of the bearing caps now that they've all been torqued down to spec um, so that we can check our plastic gauge and check how much it has deformed and uh, uh, check the measurement and make sure that that is within factory spec. The sequence of removing the bearing caps is very similar to how they go on. Uh, you don't want to take any one off while the rest are still torqued down. You want to start from the center of the crank and loosen it, you know, by 45 degrees and then go left, right, left, right, left, right, all the way down. Then you want to start back from the center again and loosen a little bit further and then you're probably good to go through and then use a drill and take out each one of the loose bolts. So after everything is said and done, here is what our plastic gauge looks like. Um, it should be smashed a pretty good amount, but it shouldn't be so smashed that it covers a whole bunch of area. Um, and we're going to measure this here in a second, but here is what each bearing journal looks like all the way down the line. Now you're going to tear off a little piece of the plastic gauge paper that has our little scale on it and we're going to come into each one of our journals where the plastic gauge has been pressed out and uh, we're going to measure against the gauge that's on the paper. The readings that we want to see in inches it's going to be 0.0012 to 0.0039 and in millimeters it's going to be 0.03 to 0.099 millimeters. Anything outside of this range there is something wrong with your bearings um, or your journals. 
Or it's also possible that you incorrectly torqued the uh, bearing caps and there was inadequate squish of the bearings. Now wipe off all of the plastic gauge marks first. And now we're gonna take our crankshaft, pull it up out of the block carefully, make sure we don't hit anything on the way out, and we're gonna set it aside for a minute. Now we're gonna put our thrust washers into the block. We're going to put our thrust washers into its respective bearing cap, and then we're gonna grease the main bearings in the block, the main bearings in the caps, the thrust washers, and the bearing journals on the crankshaft. With the crankshaft in, but nothing put on or tightened down yet, I recommend against rotating the crank. Uh, you're going to wipe off oil and possibly damage the crank from the bearings not being tightened and torqued down on. And now everything is pretty much the same as before. Just make sure that there's still enough thread lubricant on your bolts, which there probably is, there was on mine, and make sure the shoulders are still lubricated, which mine still were. And get your bearing caps into place and then gently tap them down with a hammer to make sure that they're all the way down. Then run the bolts in finger tight and then go over them again and make sure that they're nice and snug with a ratchet or something like that. And then go through and torque each one down to the spec of 40.5 foot pounds and that's 55 newton meters. And then add 45 degrees all the way across and then add an additional 45 degrees all the way across for a total of 90 degrees. It's worth noting that my bolts, once I torqued them all down to factory torque, the marks that I had put on before did not perfectly line up with where I had marked them the first time. They were slightly off by a couple of degrees. I don't think this is a problem. I just erased the marks and put new marks. I just wanted to report it to you guys, so in case if it happens to you, you know that it happened to me also. And once everything is torqued down, go ahead and rotate your crankshaft and make sure that it's rotating nice and free. And that's it, the crank is in. Hey, if I helped you out with this content, leave a like and consider subscribing. Also, if you have any questions or if you have anything that you'd like to see, leave a comment down below because I check my comments regularly. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.